Ooh, I drank a lot of coffee this morning. Uh-oh. I feel it. I know what that means. I like it! <laughs> All right. The first thing I wanted to talk about today and the reason I wanted Mikey to be here is he's a big Funko Pop collector. Big time Pop collector. And there's this this kind of this stigma around Funko Pop collecting, like from it seems like the retro gaming world, kind of where it's like <laughs> Funko Pops. It's not like oh they're lame and they're stupid. Well, actually, some people do I, feel that way. I, a lot of people tell me that. But they're, they're, <laughs> we're kind of like very anti Funko Pops, which is weird because we're a community of people that are so focused on collecting, on collecting things. Yeah. And I wouldn't say everybody. This doesn't go for everybody, but I know that's kind of a big. A big thing. I'd say like maybe like 60% of the retro gamers have told me something about the pops. <laughs> yeah, you hear it the most because you're on the social media yeah. and you take care of Pixel Game Squad, so you're yeah. with the retro gamers. I see the comments. So you see the comments when you kind of talk about Funko Pops. Why do you like, <laughs> why do you think that is? Um, see, honestly, I think it's because, um, see, pops haven't been around like since like the 90s or anything like that. Like Funko Pops have been around since like 2011, I believe. I could be wrong, but it's somewhere around there. So it's still relatively new compared yeah. to retro games. Yeah. So I think like um, like retro gamers sometimes like when they see the stuff that's kind of new and is really popular, like the first thought they get is kind of like, ah, but it's not like back in the day with my yeah. games. <laughs> no, that's kind of what I feel a little bit. All right, so playing kind of like on the side of a retro, I have no like actual hate towards them. I have some, I don't collect them per se, but I think like some of the arguments that I see when I look at it is like, Okay, I get it, like there is no nostalgia attached, so it doesn't have like an attachment to us. But I guess mm -hmm. what a lot of people see, like when I look, it's like, what is the purpose of these as far as a toy? It's, don't take this however you wanna take it, but it's like, almost, figures. it's almost like the cheapest <laughs> form of a toy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. There's like, yeah, you can't you play with them. Like I get like, I guess like the action figures back in the day, like even though we collect them, it's like, but you can play with them. They shoot things and they light up and they talk. They and move around. They move and they yeah. have figure, and even like no, popular things nowadays, like Figmas, like those are like, you can replace the faces and make them look. Those are different. really cool though. Yeah, and they're expensive. I, I, they're really expensive. I wanted to buy one and one cost like 90 bucks. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, they're, <laughs> they're from Good Smile. Yeah, but yeah. tell me what you think about like, as far as like what drives you, why do you think so many people swarm around them? Like what is the reason that everybody is like, I want them, I need okay. them. When we went to a retro gaming expo, uh -huh. the biggest line there was to buy Funko Pops. I was actually really surprised about that. Me too, it confused me. And and like I actually saw people saying like, oh man, like don't bring them anymore, you know, because it's taking away like from the retro games. But my argument was like, no, like you should actually bring them more because you saw like how many people actually went just to get the pops. Yeah, it was, but it was once different. you're in there, like you'll go and check out the rest of the stuff. Yeah. Like you'll get um like try and go check out like the other booths which had retro games and stuff like that. Yeah. And I've actually noticed that that like the pop collectors like once you start collecting pops, then they're like, oh, like what else can I collect? For sure, for it's sure. It's kind of like the first thing you start collecting and then you start going into other things. Like, oh man, like I like pins too. And oh man, I remember that game. I kind of want to start collecting those games too. Street Fighter, the audio was left off. <laughs> uh, that was random. That was, I was like, something's happening in this room. Is it haunted already by the rats? Yeah. Oh, no, they're not. <laughs> I, I think what, what is hard for, for me, Mikey, I guess what I would say is like, okay, so like retro stuff, like it's done, right? It's had its run, correct? Like, like super Nintendo. It's had its run, but I wouldn't say it's done. Well, no, no, no. I, I mean but, like as far as like production. Okay, like yeah, yeah. The, peop the people at Nintendo aren't still making Super Nintendo games per se on a day-to-day. -day. So I guess my question is as far as a collector, I feel like there's some sort of like a attainable finish line like I can get every Super Nintendo game someday if oh, I okay, wanted okay. to per se okay. So with pops I feel like for me there was even a period where I'm like I can get a lot of pops I'm gonna get all the Stranger Things pops and even yeah, just the sub <laughs> the sub category of um, Stranger Things Things kept coming out and certain Steve's were getting really expensive Keep coming out too. and I was like all right I can't do this. I guess what I'm saying is the uh, do you feel like there's an obtain an obtainable goal with it because when yeah. when are they gonna be done? It's almost like you don't know if you're ever gonna possibly be able to collect every pop. Because... They'll keep going for sure. Um, and I actually understand what you mean because, like, let's say like you're a Dragon Ball fan and like you're trying to collect all the Dragon Ball pops, you're gonna have a hard time because first off, there's a couple of them that cost like over two thousand dollars. So that right there, like to complete a set, you're gonna have to have a lot of money because there's some of them that cost like $300. And the reason they cost a lot is because like, let's say there's like a Frieza, which is like a super important character. They'll make like maybe like a thousand of those. 
So you have to be one of the 1,000 people to get that pot. Uh -huh. So once you want to complete a set, you really want to complete it. And the only one you need is that $2,000 pop. A lot of people actually do pay for it right now. Yeah, I mean, it's like any really collecting thing you get. Any collecting thing, like. yeah. So, um, oh, I actually brought a few examples of why, like, I actually think it's pretty cool that, that like, the pops are growing and everything. So, I actually brought some props some, of pops. Some props of pops. Okay, so, I want you to tell, look. What other toy line has these type of pops right here? So, you have a basketball player, right? LeBron James. Well, there is LeBron James toys okay. out there. Is there a McLovin toy? A movie? I don't know. Okay. Is there a... Well, there's obviously gaming <laughs> toys, but yes. they also have gaming toys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, let's see. Then they also have a Colonel Sanders. That's pretty cool. I will say, <laughs> that's one thing I've noticed with Pops is like, of course, there are... All the licenses. There are have. toys for a lot of different kind of weird licenses out there, but Pop definitely does have like all of them. Kinda. Look at the newest one. Uncle Sam. Uncle Sam. So, like, the reason I brought those out is just to show that that the reason that people collect them is that they literally have a toy for, like, all sorts of, like, shows, movies, and stuff. For sure. They have every, like, type of culture. And, and, and like, you could buy, like, let's say, like, you're a KFC fan. Like, oh, like, every time you look at, like, the Colonel Sanders. I don't, know, get, I don't know many people. I don't know if that's at the best point. Like, hey, what are you into? Like, well, I, I'm a KFC kind of guy. There's a lot of people like yeah. that. Yeah. Right? I, I, I have a big question for you, which I think is I, actually. I a, have a big answer. The question that I see when I actually went on forums and looked up, like, what's up with the hate of Funko and stuff. A lot of people, and how do you feel about when people are like, this will be the next Beanie Baby where everyone says, why the F did I buy these? Um, well, I've never really understood the beef with Beanie Babies. Uh, I guess people thought they were gonna be worth something one day, and then in the end. But there is some that are worth a lot, ain't there? I don't really think so. I think it kind of was one of those things where everyone's like, hold on to them, they're gonna be worth a lot someday, and then 20 years later, everyone was like, oh crap. Oh, okay. 50 cents, Goodwill, you know. What well, you when people tell me that, I kind of feel like, um, it could die out. I mean, like, you never know, like, stuff dies out all the time. Yeah. Um, but I do think that the people who are really collectors, like, they're gonna see these older pops and still be paying, like, a ridiculous amount of money. Like, the most expensive pop I know of, like, goes for over $10,000, and I don't think anyone's gonna sell it for less money, you know? So I think that people are gonna keep kind of, like, overpaying for them. <laughs> yeah, that's normal, though. And, and then, the, uh, like, the price is gonna stay there. But um, I do feel if they keep making... Um, like one of like the problems they have right now is that like let's say Goku he has like I think like 15 different Gokus yeah I feel like so they kind of overdo a character sometimes so that's one thing that people do complain about because then it kind of like people feel like it kind of drives down the value of other pops because it's kind of like all right I got this Goku but there's also another 15 of them so it's kind of like ah oh, you can get one of those too yeah so I mean, I get it. Kind of like there's like variants in video games too, like in retro games, where you're like, oh, do I have this label looks different? I think there's like yeah, three okay. different yeah. Wayne Gretzky's on the NES or something, and they all look slightly different. All right, last point. Okay, last before. point I have too. I oh, have yeah, one point. you go on. So I still think they're gonna keep growing if they get like, let's say they get like the Nintendo license and they get like Super yeah, Mario yeah, yeah, yeah. stuff. Well, like there's still a lot of like shows or like games that they could go into and get a license for that I think would blow up. Like, um. Like, let's say they get, like, a Super Mario one. That would blow well, up. I'm curious to see how the retro gaming demeanor towards Funko Pops would change Hopefully. if they started releasing a ton of different, uh, you know, Mario Pops, because I feel like it would change for me. I'd be like, oh, shoot. I think everybody would want them, honestly. Maybe I will buy some of these, you know, <laughs> if they put out some cool ones. Yeah. All right, the last one, I only say this to, to hurt your soul, because I know you hate when people say this. What about the people who call it the Fortnite of, um, the Fortnite of collecting? Um, I think it's just ignorant. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think, um, well, honestly, when I start getting, like, hateful comments like that. Like, when they're just clearly, like, upset and not, like, actually thinking. Yeah, I d um, if anything, like, the first thing that pops into my head is, but you're a collector as well, you know? Like, why are you talking mess about yeah. someone else that collects something else? Yeah. You know, because we're all collecting. And I'm pretty sure that there's people that think that, like, oh, like, why are you collecting games? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah, you know? <laughs> Trust me. I've talked to, I live in Newport Beach, California. I've talked to many of my wife's friends where they're like, what do you collect? I'm like, I collect video games and I'm, I'm building an arcade and I watch cartoons <laughs> and I like Batman. And they're like, cool. How old are you? <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of people like that. So yeah. I feel that, like, if a collector kind of takes that role or, or like, that mentality is kind of like, ah. Oh, Maybe you shouldn't because yeah, you're a collector yeah. as well. You know, we're all collectors at the end yeah. of the day. We're doing it to have fun, be Absolutely. happy, and that's 
that's where I stand. And I'll say too, at the end of the day, I truthfully don't care, and I've never been, I've never had any like animosity or hate towards like Funko Pops. Like that's stupid. I mean, even if it's not personally for you me. You told me that before. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Thanks. A big thing that I see like in media nowadays is when I look on the internet as I see like Rotten Tomato things or I see movie review scores and a lot of times what I've noticed is it doesn't really matter which way it is like the movies are getting 10 by audiences and twos as far as critics <laughs> or the opposite yeah. you know tens by the critics and twos by the audience you don't see that too much do you i, I kind of do i see it when i like in youtube feeds like why is this this and why did this say oh, this okay, okay. but i guess the question is is like what what is your feeling or what are our thoughts about like why is this like a thing why where is the disconnect so strong of what the audience is saying and what the critics are saying Okay, the first thought that comes into my head is is that I feel like critics, they might take their job a little too seriously. They're, yeah. Where um, they'll watch anything and they're very pessimistic towards it. Like where like they'll see something that like they might enjoy, but they're they're watching it with like a critiquing eye, where they're like, oh, this is a cool scene, but I didn't like the way that they use this character and that Got and it. that. So I'm gonna put you down 10 points or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Like the best example I could think of is, I don't know if you watched the movie Aladdin. I didn't watch it yet and I'll even admit, and I, you know this, I, I didn't watch it. Uh, I, have, I had skepticism because as you know, in a good way, Aladdin is my favorite Disney movie of all time. Yeah. Uh, Robin Williams, one of, I think, not just in a Disney movie, one of the greatest performances of all time as the genie. So I struggled to go see it. But <laughs> I will see it obviously when it comes out. But yeah, tell me about that because I know that was like a big thing. Okay, so Aladdin, I thought it was amazing, like personally. And Oh, I forgot to tell you, my wife saw it. She said it's one of her favorite movies she's ever seen. What? Ever. Let's go. I, I was like, you. I was like, all right, like, and she was like, you wouldn't believe me. And my wife <laughs> is not easily pleased with movies. Really? She's like, man. So when I'm really happy to hear that. Yeah. I really so am. was I. I was like, okay, I have a little more faith. Like, going so here. Mikey wasn't lying to me. <laughs> Stupid Mikey wasn't wrong. <laughs> See, because like I'm a fan of the old one as well. And of yeah, course, oh, yeah. you know, like we have Robin Williams, who's a legend. Yeah. So, like, whenever you hear that, that like he's about to get replaced by somebody else. Well, not really replaced, but um. Yeah, yeah but someone's doing. What's his, the word for it? Doing his part. Someone's playing his part. Doing his part. Like the first thing that people think, like, oh no, he's not gonna live up to Robin Williams and stuff like that. But the first thing I thought was, he's gonna play his own. You have to. Like type of genie. You have. To. If he tries to be like Robin Williams, he's gonna fail. He has to be his own. So I'm always like down for changing anything, you know, like let's say like they change up a character on something uh, You know, I'm always like, all right, that's what the storytellers want to give me. That's what I'm gonna watch I'm gonna enjoy it for whatever you want to tell me. So what you know? do you think the disconnect is if you enjoyed it? People we talked to enjoyed it. Where does the critics fall in line? What were they saying? What's like the thing that's getting critics not even just Aladdin in general that's like making people think like This this isn't good Um, it, It's just that it's just watching the movie but looking for stuff that's wrong with it instead of watching the movie and enjoying it and seeing how they feel as they're watching it which i understand it's their job you know yeah. that's what they do is like write papers on it i think that's write hard articles on it but i think that's hard even with like and you know the same goes for video games and things like that because when it's your actual job there becomes a sense of it not being as enjoyable no matter what it yeah, is that's even true. even in the youtube world there's times where i've been game hunting to where I'm like, I just want to put away the camera and enjoy yeah. game hunting, <laughs> yes. you know? So for these people, I understand that there's things that they have to look for, but it's hard to find a way to get back to that place where it's like, can you just say, did I enjoy the movie? Without looking at it of the eye of like watching every like, oh, uh. Uh, look at the lighting there. <laughs> and I already saw you showed me that Lion King reviews are already coming back from critics as super low. Yeah, like the audience score was good, and then like the critic score was live. Um, I forgot what it was. I don't know if you remember the scores, but it was like, like the, fifty-eight or something. something yeah, like yeah, it was something low. But like the Aladdin one got like a fifty-four, from like the critics, and the audience score was a ninety-four. You know what I saw? <laughs> like that's a big difference. Well, I, I look. I was looking up articles last night, and I saw from the AV Club an interesting article about The Lion King, and it was saying why they didn't like it, and what they were saying. Again, we haven't seen the movie; it's not out yeah. yet as the time of us filming this. Is that it's so realistic. I'm bless so you. Sorry. Bless I'm you. Oh, so sorry. I was trying to hold it in. <laughs> <laughs> okay. it, they are saying it's so realistic, which is amazing, which is a great thing. But the problem that comes with it being so realistic is it is so much played off real animals in the jungle in Africa, whatever. That if you think about it, 
the big expressions that Disney would give these characters, Mufasa, Scar, Simba, were crazy, and Timba and Timon and Timon and Pumbaa. Timon and Pumbaa. Timba. <laughs> Timba. Timba. <laughs> Timon and Pumbaa. They're having these big, crazy, fake expressions and movements, but they said when they put that into a place of super realism, it almost is like animals can't really make those faces. Yeah. So it said that they kind of stuck with those and they didn't really get to express themselves as much as they would like and it just felt kind of dull, although beautiful. Oh, uh, okay. You know? See, I understand that argument. You know, I yeah. see where they're coming from. But at the end of the day, it's like The Lion King was based off of like real animals or whatever. You know, obviously they can't talk, but uh, but, but like there's a lion in there. What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they can't talk, man. I'm telling you, bro. No! <laughs> But you know, like, like, if you're trying to make a movie like that into like a real life movie, yeah. obviously that's how it's gonna be. You know, like, like a dog can't make all those expressions, yeah. or like a like a lion can't make all those expressions. Yeah. So it's kind of like, well, you want it to be realistic. That's what it's gonna look like. Yeah, you're right. Because like, if you think about things that are CGI, like. Toy Story. Yeah. You can still play with face expressions more because there's a, a more sense of unrealistic, even though it's obviously unrealistic yeah. for animals to talk in either scenario. But there's still a little bit more wiggle room for crazy face expression. Yeah. I'm sure if Simba in the movie did some crazy funny face expression with the realism that's attached to it, people would be like, People would be that like, was you know what, I like the movie, but the facial expressions was too much. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's what they would say. Yeah. <laughs> They'll try to find something that's it, wrong with it. That's here's it. another part of it too, which I think I personally believe is like the biggest reason and this is the area that people don't like to talk about, is there's a lot of like people have agendas. You know, and that's what's hard is is there's a lot of sadly, sadly, what a stupid thing nowadays. There's so much political correctness attached to movie reviews and the way even video game reviews um, about what your agenda might be you know okay. there wasn't enough of this there wasn't enough of that there was too much of this there was too much of that I mean even Toy Story for got accused for like disableism and racism and all feminism all this stuff not saying <laughs> who I think should what but it's just like really yeah <laughs> Toy Story 4 that's you're, you're going after Toy Story 4 I think as yeah. long as there's no big glaring, you know, like, Toy Story is specifically like, hey, Bo, you gotta get out of here. Women can't do anything. <laughs> you know, then I think, okay, that's yeah. obviously, you know, ignorant and, yeah. and stupid. But when it's like little things and this, I just get so perturbed by, I see so much political correctness coming out when people are reviewing stuff nowadays. See, and... And like that kind of falls into like the people being like really pessimistic like when they like watch things or anything you know like they're always thinking of what's negative about like what I'm watching right now it could be anything you could be yeah. watching like the nicest like movie ever Toy Story yeah they're and then you're like you know what I didn't like when they did that and that yeah. I'm gonna protest it <laughs> yeah I feel like they sit with a checklist like of every uh, one of their agendas and they check it off when they see it in the movie and if it's and not, it is like, stuff ha! that like happens in like real life you of know course. in the real world yeah but like when we watch stuff that's supposed to entertain us i feel like we should just watch it just yeah. enjoy it for what it is you know like whatever like the director's trying to show us let's just try to see what they're trying to show us and then if it entertains us then good if it doesn't it'd be then just just change the channel. <laughs> or walk out. Or walk and it, out. And it'd be different though if it was like a documentary. Obviously it has to have that, you know, agenda yeah. behind it. If it's a, a documentary on Abe Lincoln or George Washington or Barack Obama or Donald Trump, it's like, okay, you have to kind of stick to your facts and yeah. what's what and what's what. But when it's people are coming and talking about and they have their- A Disney movie. <laughs> Disney movies, I'm like, guys, whatever it is, even if you're right or wrong, that's my opinion. Yeah. You might be right, you might be right, your opinion might be right, your opinion might be right, in the end, we can still enjoy the movie together. That's what, that's what I, and that's what I tell people about video games. <laughs> Guys, it's just a game. I, I, don't, I don't know, I didn't follow too much of the new Call of Duty stuff, but supposedly there was yeah, writers yeah. saying, oh, it was too realistic, and there was too much blood, and it was like people shooting people in the street, and a lot of people are like, oh, you, I get you, this game. you mean like what it was supposed to be portraying? <laughs> it you sounds know, awesome. It's what like you, you watch, a, 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 you play a video game about like the war, and they're like, <gasps> There was too much shooting. There it's was like, guns? do you know what happened in the war? <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah. So I don't know, but in the end, I think that you know, people. NES Complex has a series called "Is It Fun?" and I think that I think that needs to be applied to everything as far as when it comes to movies and video yeah. games. Did you, was it fun? Did you have fun? Did you laugh? Did you smile? Did you cry? Did you feel? Did it invoke emotions? If you got those things, cool. It was, then it did its job. 
that's really where, uh, like, what we had to concentrate on. Yeah. Uh, like, when it comes to movies and games, is yeah. did you enjoy it? Did you have a good time while you're watching it? Yeah. And like, if it made you feel a certain type of way, like, did it bring you back to 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 like a happy moment at the end? Yeah. Or, you know. And if it did offend you, then it's not for you. You don't need to go listen to someone's crazy. And it's idea. hard not to offend people nowadays. Dude, it's impossible. Yeah. It is so so that's why, like, if you feel offended towards something. I don't think you should like take it personally, you know, because if you start thinking about that thing like the whole day, then of course you're gonna be mad about it. But like if you just hear it, you're like, oh, that was kind of messed up and just move on. <laughs> That's and <it> wasn't, it. <laughs> movies on. and video games are like a creative outlet. It's almost like a, a small subgenre, a small, uh, the bigger version, the real, more real intense version of like YouTube videos. Like people make what they want. If it's my video, I'm the director, producer, all that. If it's your video, you're the director, producer. And if what you, watched Mikey do or me do and it wasn't for you, you don't subscribe, yeah. you move on. It's like if you hate it and you're millions like, Millions of channels, This millions. is stupid, I hated this movie. I didn't like this agenda, this was rude, this was whatever you want to say, this is offensive to you, whatever you believe, then don't, then it's not for you. That's it. Let's change the channel, yeah, guys. It's just, it's like Zangief the in the Street Fighter movie, quick, changing channel! <laughs> I don't remember that. He says that in the Street Fighter movie. Long. Look it up, it's on, there's a YouTube I used to love up. that movie. It's a great movie. Yeah, it really is. Yeah. I'm offended. <laughs>